Hello, everyone. Welcome to Talking Logistics, where we have conversations with thought leaders and newsmakers in the supply chain logistics industry. It's my great pleasure to welcome today's program, Dale McClung, who's Director of Design Solutions at CLX Logistics. And today we're going to talk about solutions for managing transportation spend. Now, this is a challenge that transportation executives across all industries, you know, are, are facing today. Um, you know, it's sometimes easy to get bogged down with the, you know, kind of the day-to-day uh, stuff, like, you know, making sure you find capacity or a truck today to, you know, meet your customer requirements uh, and, and do so at, you know, at the best price possible. But, you, you know, leading companies are really starting to think a little bit broader to set themselves up for success over the long term. Uh, so what types of questions are, are they exploring and what types of benefits are, are, are possible? Well, that's the main question we're going to address in today's episode. And uh, it's great to have Dale uh, with us to share his insights and perspectives and, and working with clients uh, along this front. So, uh, Dale, welcome to the program. Thanks, Adrian. Thanks for having me. Good to be here. Great. So, Dale, like I always like to do whenever we uh, uh, bring someone new onto the program, you know, we, we've had several of your colleagues on Talking Logistics in the past, but you're a first-time guest here on, on Talking Logistics. So, I'm always curious about, you know, how people get involved with this industry to begin with. So, why don't we start there really briefly, just tell us a little bit about your career path, uh, how and why you got involved with uh, logistics, and what your current role and responsibilities are there at CLX. Yeah, sure. Um, well, my background is in chemical and biochemical engineering. Uh, my career started out with uh, nine years in design, plant design and operations, and then wanted to get uh, more into supply chain. So started out as a planner and uh, then got into strategic projects and on to where I'm at today. So over the past 15 years, I've been in, uh, in supply chain related roles. So it's a little bit about my background and how I ended up here. <laughs> Great. And your role there at, uh, at CLX, so w- what's your main responsibility there? Well, I'm the uh, head of integrated logistics design, where we do design engineering and advanced analytics, as well as operational analytics for our clients. Great. Great. Well, I, like I always tell folks, you know, I started my career uh, in material science and engineering. That's actually what my background is. So it's, it's funny how you know, uh, you can start out in whether it's chemicals or material science and, and end up in supply chain and logistics. So, uh, but, but I, I think, uh, I'm sure you would probably agree that uh, looking back, uh, it was probably a good, have a reason, have a way we got here that it was a good thing that we got here because it's certainly a, a very uh, fun and dynamic uh, industry to be in. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a great uh, industry to be in. So, you know, like I said in my opening remarks, I mean, understandably, a lot of companies today are, are focused on the day-to-day transportation operations, right? Uh, you know, making sure that they get, you know, the capacity they need at the right cost, you know, to meet their delivery commitments. But, you know, is that enough to successfully manage, you know, your transportation spend and, and navigate through this challenging environment? We know that's a great question. And when I talk to our clients uh, about, transportation network and spend and and that I certainly hear a lot more about how much effort they're putting into getting loads covered and meeting customer expectations uh, in terms of delivery requirements. Uh, But to answer your question, that's not always enough to manage the spend. So trying to keep in front of you the questions of how am I doing to transportation budget uh, you know, and how am I going to performance and, and where are my levers to control that uh, are, are really important questions these days. So, so it sounds like you really have to, obviously you can't ignore the day-to-day stuff because that's what, um, you know, impacts customer performance. It's going to impact your financials in, in, in the near term. But it, but it sounds like you need to kind of uh, keep a pulse and keep uh, looking at opportunities more from a kind of a tactical or strategic perspective and, and ask those types of questions, right? Right. And, you know, the vision uh, into your process to be able to do that, the vision into your data uh, is something that a lot of a lot of folks struggle with, a lot of shippers struggle with. So they, uh, they take away from the effort of, you know, doing the analytics and data gathering and purification to uh, getting loads covered. And that's where my team and I can really help and, and give back to our clients because we can uh, give them the vision uh, that they need. We have their data, you know, through the transportation um, system. So we're helping them a lot more keeping that tactical level uh, vision in front of them while they try to keep the loads covered. 
Great. So can you give some examples of maybe some of the, those kind of tactical or even strategic questions that, that companies should have, should be exploring, should be thinking about along the lines, you know, in addition to kind of just doing the day-to-day -day stuff? Sure. Yeah. You know, one of our clients is a chemical client that was moving rail cars uh, up from the Gulf uh, to the, the Northeast. And uh, we were able to do a study for them on, you know, what it would take for barges and where the barge terminals would be and what customers they'd service and what kind of impact that would have on spend and uh, you know, on time reliability. So we were able to reduce, uh, you know, spend three to 4% of their total, which is pretty significant uh, to certain clients that could take the extra lead time. Uh, so another client of ours was uh, concerned about their LTL carrier mix. So uh, they had multiple LTL carriers on multiple lanes, uh, and they were overspending because they had the wrong uh, mix in the uh, in the routing guide. So we were able to uh, show them, you know, what the mix should be based on spend and performance, and uh, able to deliver three percent savings on that one. So that's a a couple of examples of of how we've been able to one provide vision and you know two give back in terms of performance and spend control. Right. So, so in those examples, it sounds like, um, you, you know, one case is really looking at how you're flowing product or how you're using, you know, maybe looking at alternate modes uh, of, of, of transportation. So I think, you know, in some cases it could be kind of looking at your current network and, and how you're flowing product and, and, and kind of asking that question is our current network and mode mix aligned with, um, you know, where we need to be from a customer expectation standpoint and a, and a cost perspective, right? So I think that's one area. And another one, you know, I know I've, I've heard others talk about maybe looking at, you know, dedicated or private fleet or maybe doing things on the procurement side. Do you, do you see that as well? Uh, yeah, yeah. So uh, some of our clients said, you know, looking at either starting a private fleet or, or the, the viability of the private fleet they have. So we're helping them understand what the value proposition is or could be from either a private or a captured fleet uh, and what circumstances and, and conditions make it an advantage. Some clients see it as a strategic advantage to be able to cut the lead time to delivery for their clients. So it's a differentiator for them, uh, which is very important to understand the cost of that differentiator. So that's uh, another way we're, we're giving back to know our clients here and, and helping them you know something you just said there kind of uh, sparked a question i mean i think one going back to one of those strategic questions you might think about right i mean there's different ways to compete these days and one of the areas that we've done some research in and i'm seeing more discussion around is you know competing on customer experience right um, so i mean i think from a strategic question you can compete on cost you can compete on service uh you can compete on you know a variety of different factors so, so I would think those are those would be another kind of high level question to say, hey, how do you want to compete in this environment, and what are those levers that you might be able to pull to compete? But that has, you know, cost implications. It might have service implications. It might have talent implications. Um, are you seeing more companies kind of asking that question in terms of how do we want to compete? Uh, well, yeah, they're asking that question, uh, and and the question I give back is, is that in line with your corporate strategy? So it's important to us when we, we try to help the clients that we understand the connection between the transportation strategy to the corporate strategy. Is the customer experience meant to be a differentiator um, or are we operating in a commodity environment where we want to be at market level pricing and market level service? So how we move forward with helping them decide you know, how best to manage your transportation is critically linked to how the company sees uh, the logistics network as an advantage. Yeah, uh, that's a great point. I love that. That could be a whole other episode that we can do in terms of how do you go about linking, you know, your transportation, your logistics approach and strategy to the business strategy and, and, and business objectives. Uh, but, yeah. but I think that's a, that's a, there's a lot to unpack in just that, that topic alone. But in your, but, you know, when you look at everything that we've just talked about and all these different scenarios and questions and opportunities, um, I mean, how do you go about analyzing, you know, these options and determining whether they're the right action to take, you know, to take? I mean, what, what's required to get started? I mean, data, technology, people on your end, 
what, what, what are the pieces to kind of really, you know, uh, analyze and determine the right path forward? Yeah, and a lot of times uh, the, the tendency that of the of, of a question like that is to jump straight into how can I save money or how can I improve performance or, or get my loads covered at a very operational level. But we try to start and would like to start at the strategic level, answering that question as best we can. How do we align with the strategic objectives of the company, right? And from there, we can build down from that. So if an objective is we commodity product uh, pricing and, and service, then we work that, you know, from that and, and look at the data and look at the areas that could, are most out of line or, or could add the most benefit. On the flip side, if you're talking about, you know, service as a differentiator or coverage or, or lead time for transportation as a differentiator, that really changes the way we approach the network. So maybe it's not, cost isn't first, uh, on time is first, and how does that change? You know, do you do you design a network or look for opportunities where your you know your tank trucks are going a thousand miles? You know, and you know, does it make more sense to have a transloading station closer to there where you can service clients quicker? Um, so that's where we start, and and really to get started, once we're at that point, is the data. You're right. Uh, for, for our clients uh, in TMS, we already have much of the data, which is a huge time saver. We have everything about the delivery, you know, the timing, the weight, origin, destination, costs. Uh, so we already have all of that information plugged in, which uh, is, it saves a lot of time. It can turn a four-month project into you know, a 60-day project or something shorter. So getting the data started and then doing the scenarios you know, keeping up and having good objectives for the, for the, you know, for the team and going through the scenarios. So. Yeah, no, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, I think a TMS, I mean, I think that's another, I think that's a great example, right? Cause a TMS generally speaking is used for the day-to-day -day operations, right? Making sure that you're tendering and booking and track and trace and, and so forth. But it also plays a strategic role or a tactical role here. Cause you've got, it, it also has this repository of, of, of great data that then someone like you and your team can then leverage to, uh, you know, uh, glean the, these insights that we're, you know, we're talking about. I think that's what, a, I think that's where a lot of companies struggle that, you know, they, they, they have all this data, but they don't necessarily know what to do with it or how to get started or how to kind of take what they have and then convert it in and, and do this type of analysis that, that you do. So, so I would think that part of it is, uh, um, obviously the the team that you have in place there to be able to you know take that data and then do these scenarios right yeah yeah it's important that you know here we have the advantage of one of the largest transportation databases that i've ever seen coupled with great talent right so it's important from when we work with clients that we do you know is repeatable and sustainable solutions so when we say you can save money on a specific lane from say, you know, Houston to Chicago. Um, we're doing that knowing that we can look at the market, you know, what, what are, what's the market performance on that lane? What's the expectation? What, what should the expectation be? And, you know, what's, how many providers, carriers are out there on that lane? And, you know, so setting the bar and giving it the best chance for a sustainable uh, uh, success is, is one of the things we strive for. Yeah, I mean, I think that, that's a key word there, sustainable, right? And, and I think part of the sustainable aspect of it is making sure that, you know, the data you're working with, whether it's the client's data or benchmarking and, and uh, you know, third-party data that you're using is, is both uh, uh, timely and relevant and, and accurate, right? So that you can have that, that level of, of, of confidence. Um, you know, you, you already gave some examples, but, you know, I don't know if you have others. I mean, obviously, you work with a lot of different, you know, companies there in, in these types of projects. Um, any other kind of case study examples you can give in terms of projects you've done? Well, we, uh, we're working, currently working with one of our clients on, you know, opening a new warehouse in the Texas area. So we're all aware of, you know, the petrochem business boom in the Texas area. And... Uh, 
you know, what should they be spending in outbound and inbound transportation? So we're looking at, you know, helping them understand the consolidation points for outbound and the deconsolidation points uh, for inbound and looking at how we connect the inbounds and the outbounds across different locations. So, you know, in that example, we're able to save them almost 5% in addition to the transportation spend, you know, of landing that warehouse in that location. So um, I think that's a really great example in today's environment of how we can help understand and, and draw efficiencies from deconsol or consolidation or uh, stop and drops, things like that. You know, I, I love that example because I think it points to, you know, one of the, the limitations that a lot of companies have that's kind of self-imposed is that, you know, a lot of companies still today, even though we've, we've talked about this uh, as analysts for, for a long time, is that they still treat their transportation in silos, right? So they treat their yeah. inbound separate than their outbound. And, and I think in this, as one example, they, they treat one mode differently than another mode. Yeah. Um, and I think in this environment uh, where, you know, cost pressures are greater than ever and then the customer expectations are more demanding than ever you really have to take uh you know an integrated and holistic view of of your operations as a whole inbound outbound common carrier private fleet you know different modes because i you know i think the reality is that you know for a lot of companies i think these case studies you've talked about or examples you've given show that you know companies have been leaving money on the table and and efficiency improvements on the table for a long time and now you know, now is arguably the time to, you know, start exploring these, right? Yeah, yeah, and, you know, exploring collaboration with other companies. You know, so many trucks are, are returning empty, and they're just a few miles down the road from a shipper that's struggling to get a load covered back to that same area. So one of the advantages that we get back to clients is the ability to recognize those circumstances and, and to make those offers of, you know, hey, here's – Here's some great opportunities to share across clients. So. Yeah, that's another that's another great example. I mean, we've been talking about collaboration for uh, for decades, right? And uh, you know, but the, you know, there's been a lot of talk, but not a lot of walk around collaboration. And I think those companies that you know are uh, are finally you know open to collaborative opportunities again are, are those that are going to gain some additional cost and, and productivity benefits there. Um, you know, Dale, we're running short on time here, so I'm just going to go, you know, to my last question here. I mean, as a way to summarize, I mean, what advice uh, or recommendations would you give to transportation and logistics executives, you know, to help them better manage and control their transportation spend in today's environment? And, you know, what, what actions are leading companies taking today? Right. So the advice I'd give is, first of all, get vision into the spend and how it relates to your budget, you know. Innovation and opportunity are most often born from, from vision. Uh, it's, it's hard to draw out innovation and opportunities if you don't have innovation or uh, vision into your, your data and where you're at. And uh, so second of all is, you know, get a perspective of the market you're operating in, the transportation market, and, uh, you know, how, how, what your expectations should be in terms of cost of service and lead time. And then partner with, uh, you know, some powerful analytics uh, that can do modeling for you. you. You should have models of your transportation network and, uh, on the shelf ready to pull off and do scenarios, right? So pumping through a scenario in two weeks versus setting up a model in a, in a couple of months gives you a huge advantage maybe over your competitors who don't have those models and can do those what-if scenarios. And, uh, and then keep, you know, keep a beat on the market conditions and you know what the expectations are in the short term and and how you need to either adjust budgets or adjust your strategy and stay flexible you know collaboration across clients you as you mentioned is not easy uh, but innovation is is rarely easy as well too so keeping an open mind and and really getting out of the comfort zone and finally communicating uh, communicating through scorecards and, and giving visibility to cost objectives or spend objectives uh, within the organization and its partners is is important too. You know, all all great recommendations there, and and you know, one of the things you talked about, you know, in terms of continuously asking these what if questions and having 
you know, these models, uh, you know, built. I mean, one of the buzz terms you hear a lot today is about the importance of having a quote unquote digital twin of uh, your supply chain or your, in this case, you know, your transportation, you know, network. But I think the bottom line there is that, you know, whereas these might have been, you know, one off engagements that you did maybe once a year or, or if you did a major type of M&A activity or something like that. But I think the leading companies today are really continuously doing these this analysis because their networks are constantly changing or the competitive environment's constantly changing uh the conditions are constantly changing so you really need to have that capability you know to to really do this type of analysis that we've been talking about on an as an ongoing business process uh yeah. or as an ongoing partnership in your case with with your team there uh because uh, you know the reality is that things things are changing all the time well, Dale, uh, like I always like to say at, all, at the end of all our episodes, you know, we always just manage to scratch the surface on these topics, but you provided some great insight and advice and, and a great starting point, uh, you know, to get the conversation started. So again, thank you for making the time to be with us today. Cool. Nice to be here. Thanks for having me. Great. I want to thank those of you that joined us. If you're watching this episode on, dem on demand, either at the CLX uh, Logistics website or on Talking Logistics, and you've got a question or comment for Dale, uh, you can post it there, and I'm sure he'll be more than happy to respond via that medium. Again, thank you all for joining us, and look forward to seeing you in a future episode of Talking Logistics. Have a great day.